Chag Sameach. You've heard the story of my parents' cancer. You've heard it from my dad in his famous and eloquent sermons. You've heard it from my mom, who ran races that I would never be capable of accomplishing to raise money for new cancer research. And some of you watched the events themselves unfold. But today, I'm going to speak up and tell you the story of my childhood for the first time from my perspective. When I was a few months old, my parents had just moved to Los Angeles from Hackensack, New Jersey. The reason they moved was because my dad got a job here. Being new parents in a new city with a new job and a new life wasn't easy. In fact, it was completely overwhelming. My parents were handling it, though, because that's what family does for one another. And they were happy. But when I was nine months old, my mom went to the doctor and was informed that she had an aggressive type of reproductive cancer, that she needed immediate surgery, and that the outcome of the surgery was unknown. She was 31, a new mother, and terrified. Luckily, she survived. The surgery was successful, but the price that she had to pay was steep. She couldn't have any more children which made me an only child, and which left my parents with the aftermath of an intense surgery and a nine-month-old baby that they abruptly knew would be their only one. My dad used to go away on frequent speaking engagements, so commonplace that they blended together in one melting pot of, Dad's going to be gone for the week, and I can't define them anymore, looking back. But when he returned, he would bring me presents, and life would resume. It was just Dad's job. And he always came back when he said he would, and everything was okay. But when I was in second grade, my dad went away for the week. But this time, he didn't come back in a few days like he usually did. Instead, my mom came into my room, her eyes glinting with the effort of holding in tears so as not to frighten me, and told me that my dad was in the hospital. What I didn't understand then was that he had given a speech, then fallen to the ground with a massive grand mal seizure. He was rushed to the hospital, and the doctors found that the cause of his seizure was a brain tumor. But once again, we were lucky. The tumor was benign, and he survived. He said for years afterwards, that benign was his favorite word. I grew up here, at this temple. I spent my weekdays at Sinai Akiba, my Shabbats at synagogue, up here in that front row, watching my dad speak with my mom sitting next to me. This was my starting place, my launching pad, my background story. This temple. And all of you, you watched me grow up. And with that, you all knew when my dad was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. You watched him undergo chemotherapy. You watched as he lost his hair and went pale and sickly and fatigued. And you saw the toll that it took on our family. I was nine years old. And I came to school every day and watched the gap between my childhood and the childhoods of everybody I was growing up with widen until I could barely recognize their lives anymore. And they certainly couldn't understand mine. I came home daily to find a dad whose average state quickly became lying recumbent on the couch, eyes glued to the TV. But oddly enough, the most vivid memory that I have from that year was the day my parents came to my school and pulled me out from math class and told me, crying, that this was my dad's last round of chemo and that it would soon be over. We hugged in the hallway, and I keep that memory like a bookend to the fourth grade, the year that my dad had cancer. The chemo worked, 
as much as chemo can work on my dad's type of cancer. It put it in remission, but there is no definite cure. At the time of my dad's chemo, the average relapse time was 13 months. However, thanks to the fundraisers of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, a drug called Rituxin was created. This is the drug that my dad took, and the one that allowed him to remain healthy and in remission for seven years. This allowed me to go through middle school and high school, all of my teenage years, with a dad that was healthy and cancer-free. And that is why I'm here today, a fundraiser for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society to pay it forward and to help find a cure. I want to help find a cure so that no other kid has to go through their childhood constantly wondering if their parents will make it to next year, so that no child ever has to hear the words, I have cancer, coming from their parents ever again. And I need your help. Please donate. Please help me find a cure so that this never happens again. Today is Pesach. I am here with both my parents. We are the lucky ones. Others are not so lucky. Help me find a cure. Thank you and Chag Sameach.